Uh, welcome back guys. Uh, as I mentioned from our last video, I was going to do one up where I actually drop a whole Paternoster rig from scratch so you can see how it's done and do them yourself if you want to. Um, and that, by the way, that's how I pronounce, uh, read it, so that's how I pronounce it. If I'm pronouncing that wrong and you think it's, think it's pronounced something elsewhere, put it in the comments or something and um, I'll make sure I pronounce it correctly for any other videos. And subscribe for more stuff because we'll be having a lot of other rigs of demos, ones I've already done up and why they're useful. And also um, uh, doing these, like as in designing them. And I'll include the links to some of the knots that I've previously tied. So that if you miss them in this one, you can refer back because some are pre-tied to save some time for this video. Now, uh, at the top of all my rigs, I have a clip. Like this. And the reason why I have a clip is because on all my um, lines I run my braid and then I have a mono, a fluorocarbon mono leader running off it a short distance that goes to a figure of eight loop so that never um, comes off and I can feed that through all the all the three um, the ring rings of your rod um, and then I can clip rigs on and off quickly so I like to do that because I like to be able to change my options so that's why I put clips so you know, however you want to, whatever you want to put on the top of yours is up to you. Now, the first knot I will do on this one, and I'm doing this one on purpose to show you, is um, called the polymer knot. Now, you can either do it by forming the circle like this and feeding it through, if you've got a nice big fat opening like that, or if your dexterity is a little bit shoddy like, or you've got fat fingers like me, you can put in, feed it in one way, and then feed it back onto itself. Um, and you create a loop like this. So you've got a loop on one side and then out the other side you have the main line and then the extra little snag bit hanging off. Um, and you give yourself a, de a decent amount of loop on this side and a decent amount of tag on the other side so that you've got enough to work with. I've cut this, as you can see I've cut this to the length that I sort of think I'm going to need it, longer than you, knew, you need but long enough. So for this one essentially what you're doing is you're almost doing a figure of a uh, knot where you go underneath the two lines back over the top of the two lines and then through the gap that you've created here so you've gone under over and there's a hole you come through that and the idea of this is you feed it over the swivel or the clip or the hook so this works with all of the oops that got stuck inside the clip it's, it works on all types uh, I don't use it on um, gangs because gangs are too long um, and once it's fed through, then you tighten the, the knot up by pulling the two lines, your main line and your um, the, the spare line until it gets up. And you make sure as you're tightening this, sometimes one of the knots don't tighten at the same time. So you just make sure it doesn't get caught on anything. Like on some of the rings, it gets caught as it, as it tightens. Um, and when you tighten it up nicely, pull both ends. There we go. You end up with a really nice tidy knot at the end there. And these are really strong knots and nice and quick and easy to tie. Um, I prefer using those for swivels and, and, and things like that because they are strong and you don't have to worry about it coming apart if you're not too flash with things like um, the, the Implute Clinch or the Blood Knots and all the rest of the weird and wonderful knots that we have for fishing. As long as you know three or four of the main ones, that's all you really need to know about. Now, because this is mine, I'm including one of these little float poppers. Uh, so that's actually a light float, and it's got a number two hook on it, in the mix of some fluffy, sparkly stuff. Uh, so this will actually, I just feed straight into the line, because at the bottom I haven't got anything attached yet. Or I could have attached it and then done the swivel, but done it this way. Now that free moves, uh, at the moment um, and this because you're going to have a sinker at the bottom will sit underneath the water um, but because of the current and the movement of the what's going on this will actually move around and uh, it looks like a distress bait and you can might quite often um, you'll find you'll catch stuff just on this let alone what you've got now first knot I'm going to do up now you can either use swivels so the three-way swivel like this and you use I'm doing a double one double Paternostis, that's with two uh, lines running off it. You can use swivels. We use two swivels, 
uh, three way swivels to do it but because you i don't like tying so many knots i prefer to do the dropper loop and um, one because i only have to tie one knot and two that uh, means that i can uh, attach clips not no, knowing clips to them which you could do with the, the uh, swivels but you can feed in um, uh, bucktails and hooks like this through the loops and if you have um, your hooks attached to swivels you can actually loop the swivels through it because um, the swivel you just loop it all through and then pull it tight and it just locks it in place but you can make them undone and swap them out and that's why I like them um, and just less moving parts less artificial stuff on your line less chance of fish are going to see it so getting straight to the point um, so to do it you're simply going to make a loop roughly wherever on the line that you want to start there we go wherever you want to start your first yes looks about right wherever you want to first start your first loop all right so you make a loop like this now the idea is you grab this this part of the line here and you drop it inside the loop that you've created and then outside of the loop now I won't let this go because it'll just come undone and then all you're doing is you're simply twisting this loop under and over itself once you do so that's, that's just two but you can see how there's a couple of swift loop like um, unders and overs here and unders and overs on the opposite side I don't want to let it go because they'll all just come undone at this point and on the left and the right there's both there's there's the sum I usually do these about oh, five six times maybe I do go under and over enough so you've got a few of those to there to hold it in place now the and then you grab the bit that's sitting at the back of the loop this now becomes the loop that will actually attach everything through so you feed that through the gap some of we use a matchstick in this uh, portion to hold it open but I find that it's just as easy just to do it normally um, and then essentially you grab and you pull your loop out until you get it to the sort of length that you want I like a, a pretty decent loop um, and then you just tighten the knot up on, on either side of your dropper loop. You just got to tighten this up nicely, otherwise if it doesn't tighten correctly, you can often find that when you pull on it, there we go, that one's done properly. So when you pull it through, you pull it through with your finger, make it nice and tight this way and then you just pull on the either left and the right of the the loop to tighten it up so it locks in on itself and you end up with a loop off to the side that no matter how much you pull on it it's not going to move and no matter how much tension comes up and down the line it's not going to close the loop okay so that's one of the dropper loops and then i would do another one further down here that i would attach something else onto now to speed up the video, I've done some pre-stuff in advance because it's no use me watch. I might do another one of these though. At the bottom, I'll do. Uh, I always attach. They are called their uh, fast attaches. So you tie your line onto the end of this, and this is a little fast attach where you can uh, either put on, like I said in uh, my other video about the types of rigs you can either just twist on different size sinkers so this is a big number four the heavy one if you don't have conditions don't match all you got to do is quickly untwist it ouch bites into your fingers when you're um don't have it on, on properly untwist it off it's good that it doesn't come off as easy ouch There we go. You untwist it and then you can put on a different one or if you wanted to something else like a lure or uh, one of those um, 
heavy sort of plasticky fish looking things I mentioned before but it gives you variety so you put that on I always put that on my very bottom so I have the option to chop and change as we need to now this same I'd probably do I do polymer knot on the bottom as well um, uh, I'll leave that one for the time being and we'll see how we go for time um, now when you're attaching for when you're choosing which one to run uh, off off the lines now I've pre-done ones from earlier where I've got a gain uh, and that's just done with a simple swivel and on this end this is what I do here that is my polymer knot down the bottom you can clearly see that that one's a improved clinch knot because you can see the rings so that's why I use improved clinch for the gangs because you just it's too hard to fit it through all the loops so I've done those just in case you know you're going to touch this one on so that's pre done one for earlier then I did this one before as well where it's a, just a simple hook um, so you can attach the simple hook and you can have two simple hooks running off it or two gangs running off it or one gang and one hook um, you might find the fish will take one and not the other or take one and uh, you might go I'll wait just in case they come back for the other one um, so this one's been done up this one here I did differently I did also an improved clinch you can see this one where you, it's rings around it the other thing I don't like about the improved clinch sometimes when you pull it down you can actually uh, cause a little bit of um, friction on the, the mono I mean it's not a big deal for a 20 pound um, but I just don't like it I prefer it when it's nice and smooth um, here same I've done this one's a polymer knot uh, you can see afterwards there's no change in the mono itself it's all clean and smooth so that's the kind of the difference between the types of knots and why I prefer doing the polymer if I can because um, it holds and it's clean now uh, for this one just for the video's sake, I'd just do, do, do one itself. So I'm going to do one as if I was to rig it up. Um, so I've done enough. Yeah, that looks like enough. Same sort of stuff. What I'm going to be doing is using a hook, number two, uh, one for weight for a soft plastic. Now this one special has got my blood on it because I stuck myself with it before. But it's got, um, these are, seen these stunning out new with these little slight attachments with a goldy flashy thing. So helps create a bit more flash with the soft plastic. So not only do you have the scent and the, the movement of the soft plastic, but now you have a little bit of noise, a little bit of movement and flutter as the, either the bait moves with the current or you might be doing a little bit of um, stop and then pull in that clicky noise and the swing just tracks it looks like a distressed bait fish almost so now with this one it's too big I would say to do a palmer knot so this is where I, I'd, I'd simply do an improved uh, clinch so I'm doing that right so essentially you're just grabbing a whole lot and you're looping it onto itself and you do this roughly that's all personal but I do this usually about eight times so it looks nice then you feed it back through the loop down the bottom and the improved portion is you can either tighten it from here and that's a normal one or you can feed it back into its own loop again and tighten it up from this point and usually it's harder to do when you've got trying to do it with just your hands because I normally use my teeth to this to hold this portion and then pull uh, the knot tight but, so so that my fingers are in the way to stop you seeing it tightening up but I usually hold this with my teeth while I pull this knot so it actually locks in place properly but with my hands you can see there we go so as you can see yeah you can see the sort of rings that it forms around the top of the knot and then all you do is you just clip off the excess and that's a nice improved clinch knot that's nice and tight on the other end I'm going to put a simple swivel clip because with the dropper loops 
um, I'm using swivels or swivel clips so that uh, it all stays in line the bait doesn't get wrapped around it um, that's why some people use the uh, triple swivels because they don't worry about wrapping this way and that but if you got swivels on there that's not going to happen uh, so simple uh, demo again just in case let's see if I can speed this up see how fast I can do it I'll probably mess it up because I'm trying to go quicker for everybody so that this video doesn't go out too long but the idea the whole purpose of this rig is that it essentially is designed to be customizable to whatever it is that you're aiming to try and catch and you can have many options there available for you um, so that it doesn't matter you can have one 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 bait on the one hook system sorry one hook system on the top that's bigger or smaller on the same size but different baits so you might have you know prawn on the top and squid on the bottom or something or you might have white um a soft plastic like me I, I like soft plastics and lures you might have a soft plastic on one end and lure on another and or a uh um only on one and a soft plastic on another it just gives the the fish the options um and you the options because you don't know what they might be really looking for or biting so and also increases the chance if you lose bait on one you know you're gonna get the other uh you might get the other and what did i do Right, I'm gonna use my teeth, so just I'm gonna pull it out of sight so I can actually tighten this properly. All right, clip off the excess, so that's the, the polymer knot under there and the clinch there. And then you simply I don't simply attach that on. So we'll just put that one over to the back along with the other options and I'll see how I'm going for Tom. Holy crap, a lot longer than I thought. Um, so I'll quickly just tie, you simply want to tie this one on um, to the bottom for your hook. Um, I might do one more dropper loop just uh, so you can see that again because it can, first time seeing it might be a little bit difficult. So I'm going to do that one because doing the end bit is the same as any other Knot. So once you've done any other knot, you know that the end bit has to be a weighted thing. So essentially you'll have a little popper can't go past the dropper loop. So it just sits there going up and down. Oops. And then you'll have your hook. And that's clipped on. And it's stuck to the bottom. There we go. You have your hook that's floating off to the side in the current and uh, you're moving around like that. So um, when you're doing these up, you're doing them up depending on making sure that the lengths match up with. Uh, so this one's a rather long one. So normally I'd probably do my dropper loop down here and I'd make this actually a little bit longer um, or I'd shorten that uh, to one that's probably a little bit shorter like the gang is a little bit shorter. But that's how they run. So simply do another drop of loop, and you can pretty much figure out that you put the attacher, the fastener on the bottom, and that's just a quick way of of um, putting on and off sinkers or some weighted system at the very bottom to help attract um, the fish. Sorry, that was the wrong word. To help uh, help drop the weight down to the bottom. Um, and keep it uh, keep it down there and keep your bait off the bottom floating in the current that's moving around that's essentially what we're trying to do and the float at the top this is also just to try and slightly keep the sinker off the bottom um, for the purpose of not getting snagged but also increase the chance of catching something just in case it hooks onto that so here I am doing the dropper loop. So I put fed it through and I fed it through a number of times. And then once I'm happy with the amount of times I've wrapped this around, you grab the big loop that's hanging out the back. 
you feed it through. You can even just pull it this bit open if you're having trouble grabbing it. Grab it, pull it through until you've got you know, the amount that you want to come through the, the other side. Having a decent dropper loop so that you've got enough to, to work with um, is good. Too small and it'll make it a bit more difficult for you to tighten. And then you just tighten up the, the sides of the, the loop itself. There we go. So now I've got my second dropper loop. And then as you can see, I'm pulling on this. And it's not changing the size of the dropper loop. And that's two of them on there now. They're a bit close to each other, but that's for... Just so I could tie one on nice and quick, just so you could see that one again. And then down the bottom, you'd, we stick our sinker. And that's the rig, essentially. And you put on whatever you want, depending on what you think you're going to catch. Or what you think might catch. And if you have, like me, lots of different options set up, ready to go. Like ones like these. Your gangs get stuck on everything, or a standard hook, or a smaller hook, a bucktail, soft plastics, whatever. You can simply chop and change, and you can chop and change your sinker is on the bottom as well, as I mentioned in my other video. So I'll link back to those ones just in case there's bits in there that uh, didn't make too much sense. And hopefully um, this will enable you to make your own. And if you don't want to use the loops, go ahead and use the swivels and just do um, the, the knots in that. Uh, so thanks for that and uh, I'll see you next time.